Have you ever heard that song? It's a little familiar, he said. Yes, it is. Good morning, everyone. We are thrilled to have Weird Al Yankovic on the morning blend today. Yay! Yay! became an icon of pop culture back in the 1980s with this popular parody selling get this over 12 million albums but now Crazy. he's yet yeah, now that can't be true what? it is it is i read it i read it on um uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia. So and whatever is on Wikipedia is <laughs> correct. True. Now, though, he is a best, uh, New York Times best-selling author. He is here today with his second children's book. It is called My New Teacher and Me. His first book, When I Grow Up, won several awards. Good morning. Now, what do you want to be when you grow up? I haven't decided yet. Yeah, okay. I was say, have you grown up? No. no I, I, hopefully, by the end of the week, I'll know. <laughs> I'm still working on that. Yeah. So we got to know, because on your book, as you kind of showed that new book, it says by Al Yankovic, is the yes. weird gone? No, no. You know, that's sort of like the way I've always done it. Whenever I'm in front of a microphone or on stage, it's weird Al Yankovic. But okay. as, a, as a writer or director or producer, it's just Al Yankovic. Okay. What, how do you feel about the weird part of your name? Because one of the things I read is that you skipped second grade. That's right. You're a little smarty pants, huh? I wasn't. When I write a song like White and Nerdy, that comes from personal experience. <laughs> That's a lifetime's worth of research there. And you were valedictorian of your I senior was. class, right? I was, so you, yeah. you are smarty pants. Uh, yes. I was the kid that got beat up at recess. That was me. Oh. <laughs> I think like, it's like an anthem to nerds everywhere, right? I mean, we all have a little nerd in us, you know? And it's like, it's so nice to resonate with somebody who's done something that we can all relate to. Yeah. Well, now, mean, now people think nerd, nerd is empowering. It's like, is. Like, like when I was sure. growing up, you didn't want to be a nerd, but now it's like everybody's like, oh no, I'm a nerd. Really, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm a nerd inside. Because now people figured out nerds rule the world. So everybody wants to be a nerd now. Yeah, Especially everybody thinks computers. Bill Gates. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to, to talk about the, the children's book. Yeah. You were, um, you grew up an only child, right? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm still an and only child. You <laughs> have. <laughs> <laughs> and you have just one child. I do. Okay. And my wife is an only child as well. Really? No yes. way. I wouldn't lie to you. Are you all a little selfish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all self-absorbed. We're horrible people. Um, so you you write a children's book. Do you always think of your daughter as you write children's books? Do you do you think of kids you've met everywhere? Mm. How does because I, I, thinking about Weird Al writing a children's uh -huh. book, those those don't necessarily seem like they go hand in hand. Well, I, I'm pretty in touch with my inner child, I think. You know, and my daughter is a constant inspiration. Uh, but full disclosure, I mean, I, I've always wanted to write children's books. I mean, I, I've, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Seuss and Shel Silverstein, and I always thought I'd be fairly good at it. And I was approached a few years ago by a, an editor from Harper Collins that said you should write children's books. And I said, yes, I should. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I've heard from book reviewers, I'm not an author myself, but children's books seem like easy books to write because they're short. You know, they're not 500 page right. novels. Uh -huh. But to write a really good children's book, I've heard takes a lot mm. of Possess. Effort? Effort. Yeah, to, to make it really good. Well, you know, with a children's book, if they're, if it's 800 words, and they want to try to keep it to about 800 words, because, you know, you don't want the, the bedtime story to go on all night. For sure. But every syllable is important. I mean, my editor and I would argue for three months over, should it be a comma or an ellipse or a semicolon or a dad? You know, it's like every little thing is so important. That is so funny. It is cool. So tell us about the book, because Billy is the main character. Yes. It, it, do you draw from your life or people you know or experiences when you when you pick a character? Well, um, Billy was an invention, but he's this much autobiographical. Okay. Billy was uh, Billy's a very uh, energetic and imaginative kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not as confident or outspoken as Billy. He he really owns his uh, his individuality and his weirdness. Uh, and he in, in this book he kind of has a clash with his new teacher, Mr. Booth, who's a very by the book, by the rules authoritarian who doesn't abide nonsense in his classroom and, and Billy's full of tall tales and wild stories and they have a little disagreement but so the, the book is basically a celebration of imagination. Mm -hmm. I've always heard that, that artists draw from their pain more than any you know it seems like everybody who writes a sad song. I'm in sad huge pain right now. <laughs> yeah. I am in such pain. You're grimacing nonstop. <laughs> exactly. But I did read that your, both your parents passed away um, of an unfortunate accident of carbon monoxide poisoning in their own home um, and you went on stage and perform that same night. I did. That's got to be so difficult. When you think about writing children's book and you have that, that tender feeling in your heart, do you, do you, does that come across, do you think, either in your music or your writing? It does what come across? D that, that, do you draw from that pain from when you're writing? my parents dying? Well, yeah. I mean, you, to, to be an only child and to lose both of them, I just think that's a horribly painful thing. I thought it was amazing that you performed that same night. 
you know, we were on tour, and I, I didn't want to disappoint those people, and I just felt that, you know, if, if uh, my music could, um, uh, you know, bring some, some happiness to people, maybe it could, like, help me get over my own suffering. So it, it was difficult. Yeah, have you ever thought about writing a children's book that, that has themes of, you know, for kids who've lost parents? I hadn't really thought of that, no. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's amazing that you know you can you can take a, a moment like that and just turn it into something because they always say you know fake it till you make it, and oftentimes I think that's what artists do, that's what people do. You fake it until you can get across you know that humor, and we use humor you know a lot of times to cover up pain. But for you, you grew up very shy. How does somebody? Because there's so many kids out there. They're home from school. They're watching. There's people home. They say I'm inherently shy. I don't like being in public. How does someone go from a shy accordion player to somebody who's so confident? And energetic and positive, and take the stage. How do you change like that? Is um, it just through experience and through practice? I guess. I mean, you know, uh, be, being able to, you know, I, I do have that, you know, still the shy part of my personality. But do you? It's, it's nice to be. Yeah, I do. And it's still, it's nice to be able to, uh, you know, go on stage and and you know, um, uh, show off the other part of my personality. So it's, uh, maybe I'm bipolar. I don't know. <laughs> What about your parodies? Do you have to get permission to do them? Because, and I, do you have a favorite parody, a favorite song um, from from I, all of your recordings? I, I don't really. I mean, and I, I do get permission on to do the parodies. I mean, legally, I don't necessarily have to. It's sort of a gray area, as they say. But uh, I, I, I always want to make sure that the artist is on board, and uh, I don't want to step on people's toes. It's meant to be an homage. Uh -huh. And I heard that Michael Jackson was a big fan of yours. Yeah, he seemed to be. Yeah. That's kind of cool. What about Prince? I heard he was a little bit different, more difficult, because you wanted to do some parodies of some of his work. Well, Prince, you know, I, I, I've had a pretty good track record over the years, and Prince is really the only guy who's consistently said no. So when he's on Morning Blend, please ask him why he turned me on, and we'll find out. We'll get the I'm from Minnesota, so I've been out to his well, recording please, studio, I, oh, but well. I still have not met him. Well. So, yeah, I know. But my favorite of yours was La Lasagna, because oh. my brothers are huge Beach Boy fans, and just all, the, you know, like, the songs I think everybody, we, you know, we saw people in the hallway, they're like, of all the guests that you've had on the Morning Blend, so many people are most excited to see you here. Well, that's so really nice. Thank it's you. It's really great Thank to you. have you. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Perform This Way. Okay. Yeah. And making that one, little Lady Gaga. You do a little bit of everything with the 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 directing, the the, the choreographing of these videos. How how when, when you take something like this, what is it that that you think works in this one in particular? Um, well, I, I just thought it would be amusing to, to see me uh, in, in drag in 24 different outfits. And uh, a lot of people found this video disturbing because it was my head uh, fused. Uh, onto a 24-year-old woman's body. So a lot of people were sexually confused after watching the video. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That's what people like about it. They're I sexually think. confused after watching Lady Gaga in general. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, uh, hilarious and horrifying at the same time. Yeah, I would think people like Lady Gaga see it as a privilege or an honor yeah. if you want to parody them. You, m they have to m know that they've made it. Once Weird Al wants to parody, she them. was True. actually quoted uh, in Rolling Stone as saying that it was a rite of passage to get the Weird Al parody. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So rain or shine today, are you going to be at your book signing? Absolutely. It no matter ha what. Hailing. You'll do it. Uh, absolutely. I'll right. be there. Do you do a reading as part of it? No, I'll just be there signing as quickly as I can. We, uh, there's a lot of people that show up to these things, so I try to get through. I, 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 I will turn nobody away. I'll be there till the last person leaves. You yeah. will not, I, for real. Yeah. You'll, he'll be there till the last person leaves. Will there be a lot of kids there? Probably. That's we'll fantastic. I think that's great. All right, so here's the information. It's at 6 o'clock tonight at the Barnes & Noble in Brookfield. The book signing again tonight, and Weird Al said that he will stay until everybody's book gets signed. Again, the name of the book is My New Teacher and Me. Best of luck to you. I Thanks love for it. joining My us pleasure. on the morning. Thank you. Thanks, Al.